So I'm going to read on from there, page 157. Um, line 100, 241. A new stage is coming. At last, the charmed immensity looked forth. Astir, vibrant, hungering, she groped for minds. Then slowly sense quivered and thought peered out. She forced the reluctant mold to grow aware. The magic was chiseled of a conscious form. Its tranced vibrations rhythmed a quick response and luminous stirrings prompted brain and nerve. Awoke in matter, spirit's identity, and in a body lit the miracle of the heart's love and the soul's witness gaze. Impelled by an unseen will, there could break out fragments of some vast impulse to become and vivid glimpses of a secret self and the doubtful seeds and force of shapes to be awoke from the inconscient swoon of things. An animal creation crept and ran and flew and called between the earth and sky. Hunted by death, but hoping still to live and glad to breathe, if only for a while. Then man was molded from the original brute. A thinking mind had come to lift life's moods. The keen-edged tool of a nature mixed and vague, an intelligence half witness, half machine. This seeming driver of her wheel of works, missioned to motive and record her drift and fix its law on her inconstant powers, this master spring of a delicate engineering aspired to enlighten its user and refine, lifting to a vision of the indwelling power, the absorbed mechanics, crude initiative. He raised his eyes, Heaven light mirrored a face. Amazed at the works wrought in her mystic sleep, she looked upon the world that she had made. Wondering now seized the great automaton. She paused to understand herself and aim. Pondering, she learned to act by conscious rule. A visioned measure guided her rhythmic steps. Thought bordered her instincts with a frame of will and lit with the idea her blinded urge. 
On her mass of impulses, her reflex acts, on the inconscience pushed or guided drift and mystery of unthinking accurate steps. She stuck the specious image of a self, a living idol of disfigured spirit. On matter's acts, she imposed a patterned law. She made a thinking body from chemic cells and molded a being out of driven force. To be what she was not inflamed her hope. She turned her dream towards some high unknown. A breath was felt below of one supreme. An opening looked up to spheres above and colored shadows limbed on mortal ground the passing figures of immortal things. A quick celestial flash could sometimes come. The illumined soul ray fell on heart and flesh and touched with semblances of ideal light, the stuff of which our earthly dreams are made. A fragile human love that could not last Egos, moth wings, to lift the seraph soul, appeared. A surface glamour of brief date, extinguished by a scanty breath of time. Joy that forgot mortality for a while came a rare visitor who left betimes and made all things seem beautiful for an hour. Hopes that soon fade to drab realities and passions that crumble to ashes while they blaze kindled the common earth with their brief flame. A creature insignificant and small, visited, uplifted by an unknown power, man labored on his little patch of earth for means to last, to enjoy, to suffer, and I, a spirit that perished not with the body and breath, was there like a shadow of the unmanifest and stood behind the little personal form, but claimed not yet this earthly embodiment. Bhuvana, will you begin, please? At last, the charm immensity looked forth. As a step, a step, vibrant, hungering, she groped for mine. Then slowly, sense curled and talk peered out. She forced the reluctant mood to grow aware. So, yeah. So this is a development in consciousness. 
consciousness in material bodies. In the, in the plant level of development, the individual can't do much, no? can't move around, can't express itself much. It can express itself only in its beauty, its color, its forms. No? But then, Shobindo tells us, there's a time when the charmed immensity, the life goddess, looks out, looks out from the form. She's astir, she's moving, vibrant, hungering. She wants mind. She doesn't even know what it is, but she's longing for that kind of consciousness. And when the, the life force in things uh, comes to this level, then slowly sense quivered. Hmm. And thought peered out, looks out of the of the form. She, the life force, forced the reluctant mold to grow aware. The mold, the physical stuff. It's a word which has a double meaning and it's always nice to remember both the meanings. They always complement each other. Mold can mean just soil, <coughs> earth. Hmm? But a mold, we make a mold when we're going to shape something, when we're going to make a statue or a candle or a cake even. We, we pour the stuff into the mold. Hmm? So this mold, life is pouring herself into the, the physical mold and when she does that, she forces it to become aware. Matter is, we assume it's not really very aware, but when the life force enters into it, awareness comes. First of all, sense awareness, and then some kind of understanding. The mold is, is matter. It doesn't want to change much. No, It's inert, lazy, doesn't want to change, but the life force forces it <laughs> to wake up, to become aware. We've passed through all these stages, <coughs> otherwise we wouldn't be sitting here, we wouldn't be able to read these lines. It's beautiful the way that Sri Aurobindo explains to us all the stages that we have passed through. Philomena. The magic was chased of an conscious form, which changed vibrations without a quick response, and luminous streams prompted, prompted. prompted the brain and air, awoke in matter spirit's identity, and in the body they can record of the arts, love, and the soul's witness days. Yes. The first miracle is the sense and the beginning of some kind of awareness. But then, in a further step, no, uh, the body wakes up. We feel, a, we, we say we, we feel love in our heart, no? But it's not just this physical heart. There's this miracle of the heart's love and the soul's witness gaze, the soul looking out and understanding subtle truths about the world around it. Dana. 
impelled. Hmm? Hmm? Impelled by an unseen wind that would break out fragments of some vast impulse to become and vivid glimpses of a secret side and the doubtful seeds and forms of shapes to be awoke from the inconscient swoon of things. Yes. So there's this gradual development, no? It's interesting that the heart's love comes at quite an early stage and the soul's witness gaze. Perhaps even in animals, we can, simple animals, we can see something like this. And this is happening because that a work of the life force waking things up is being driven by an unseen will, a will that we don't see at work, we are not aware of it. But if that will weren't insisting, then uh, all these developments wouldn't happen. <coughs> Impelled by an unseen will that could break out of that inertia. Hmm? fragments of some vast impulse to become and vivid glimpses of a secret self and the doubtful seeds and force of shapes to be awoke from the inconscient swoon of things. This seems to have been a period in evolution that was tremendously fruitful in all kinds of varied shapes and possibilities, um, plants and animals and all kinds of things, no? developing in extraordinary ways. And they are, in a way, seeds and shapes of things that will be in the future. For example, hands. If we go back to very, very early stages of evolution, uh, we can see these mud skippers. Hmm? And they've got little fins and they push themselves around in the mud with the fins. Hmm? But gradually, uh, in the next generation of um, creatures, um, they, they begin to develop really into fingers. Hmm? So we can see that the seed of what we have as hands has been there potentially from a very, very early stage of evolution. And we do things like those early creatures. I don't know whether you like to go to the beach sometime and you wander along the beach and uh, you just pick up things. You look at them and how nice. You know, and then you throw them down again. And you know, um, Creatures have been doing that from the very, very beginning. So these are the fragments of some vast impulse to become all the many, many, many forms that there will be in the universe, in the future uh, universe. And all of them are expressing these vivid glimpses. We just see a little bit of a secret self that is driving this will and um, insisting on the development of these doubtful seeds and uh, the force that's creating these shapes that will be in the future. Also, our shapes will be different. We're not stuck in these kind of shapes forever. As the consciousness grows, as the uh, spirit within develops us, uh, very different kinds of bodies are going to develop. Much more sensitive and flexible and uh, powerful also 
and long lasting. So all this woke up from the inconscient swoon of things. Matter was in a kind of swoon, a kind of trance or sleep. When you, uh, you lose consciousness, swoon. Joel. When animal creation crept and ran and flew and called between the earth and sky, hunted by death but hoping still to live and glad to breathe if only for a while. Mm. So that's the next step, the animal creation, which we read about quite in some detail in the previous canto, you know, from the point of view of form. Now he's talking about the inner movements that cause these things to happen. So there's the animal creation. It creeps along or it runs, flies. It has a voice, it can call you know, between the earth and the sky. That animal creation, like us, is subject to death, hunted by death, but still there's the impulse, the wish to live and to enjoy, and the happiness, glad to breathe, even if it's only for a short while. Amrita. The man was moving from the original root. A sinking mind had come to live life's most. The king and jeep too of a natural mixed environment. An intelligent car witness, car machine. So this is the thing that distinguishes human beings. A thinking mind. And that thinking mind changes the moods of life, lifts them up to a higher level. It's uh, quite a sharp, intelligent tool, the thinking mind. No? Even though the nature that is using it, this uh, human nature in its early stages, is still mixed, vague, unclear. This intelligence, perhaps especially in the early stages, half witness, half machine. One important aspect about thinking mind is the capacity of observation, of noting and remembering things, and perhaps even drawing conclusions from what we observe and see. But the other side, the other aspect of this uh, thinking mind is that it's just mechanical. It's just following the impulses of nature. And we can see that in ourselves, the way it just runs on like a machine. So it's half witness, half machine. Would you like to read? Will you read? No. All right. Lela. This seeming driver of her wheel of works, mission to motive and recall their drift, and fix its law on her inconstant powers, this master spring of a delicate engineering aspires to enlighten its user and refine lifting to a vision of the indwelling power, the absorbed mechanics through initiative. He raised his eyes, heaven light mirrored a face. Yeah, so this is a new stage, no? This intelligence. It seems to drive the wheel of nature's works, of life's works. 
it seems to have been given the mission to give motives, to tell us, do this, it'll be good. Hmm? And to record what nature does in us, to remember, oh yes, I did that, maybe it wasn't so good, I won't do it again. Or, it was great, of course we'll do it again. Hmm? Mission to motive and record her drift and fix its law, the law of mental perception and decision-making on nature's inconstant powers. These powers that are shifting and unreliable and changing all the time. Shobindo says this mind is a master spring. I think nowadays we don't use clockwork so much. No? But there was a whole time in human history when uh, the, the working of these wheels and the master spring and all that, it was so important. Now it happens in a different way. So this mind, missioned to motive and record the drift of nature, uh, aspires to enlighten its user, it wants to make us more conscious and to refine, lifting us, lifting this um, mental consciousness. He calls it the absorbed mechanics crude initiative. That's the other half, why the, uh, the mechanical part of the mind is just going on crudely. But the other part is aspiring to enlighten and refine the crude mechanics, uh, sorry, the absorbed mechanics, crude initiative. He's absorbed, he's looking only at what is in front of his nose. He's not looking around more. Hmm? But with the help of that master spring, um, he's able to lift that uh, indwelling power to a vision of other things. So the indwelling power, the Purusha, raised his eyes Heaven light mirrored a face, the beginning of a person, a unique individual. We can read just a little bit further. Uh, Alexander. Amazed that the words brought in her mystic sleep, she looked upon the world that she had made, wondering now sees the great bottom of time. She paused to understand herself and me. Pondering, she learned to end by conscious rule. A vision measured, guided to rhythmic steps. Thought, ordered her instincts with a frame of will. And did with the idea of blinded urge. Yes, this is a whole new stage, no? when thought becomes a very dominant part of human consciousness and action. Mm. Of course, it is, it is nature who's doing it, this great automaton. She's also a kind of machine. But this new power of wondering and pondering has come in to influence her work. She pauses to understand herself. And what is she trying to do? She learns to act by conscious rule. Even animals have this. They think, oh, if I do this, it's good. I will go on doing this. So. There she is, she's in these rhythmic movements, these rhythmic steps. 
that some kind of intention, a visioned measure, guides her steps. Thought bordered her instincts with a frame of will. In instinct, uh, we just do things. We don't stop to think that that's what we want to do because. And there's a stage when this will, intention, begins to affect our instincts. They're no longer quite so instinctive. So the blinded urge of nature gets lit with the idea, the creative idea. At last, the charmed immensity looked forth, astir, vibrant, hungering, she groped for mind. Then slowly sense quivered and thought peered out. She forced the reluctant mould to grow aware. The magic was chiseled of a conscious form. Its tranced vibrations rhythmed a quick response and luminous stirrings prompted brain and nerve. Awoke in matter, spirit's identity and in a body lit the miracle of the heart's love and the soul's witness gaze. Impelled by an unseen will, there could break out fragments of some vast impulse to become and vivid glimpses of a secret self and the doubtful seeds and force of shapes to be awoke from the inconscient swoon of things. An animal creation crept and ran and flew and called between the earth and sky, hunted by death but hoping still to live and glad to breathe if only for a while. Then man was molded from the original brute. A thinking mind had come to lift life's moods. The keen-edged tool of a nature mixed and vague, an intelligence half witness, half machine. This seeming driver of her wheel of works, missioned to motive and record her drift and fix its law on her inconstant Powers, this master spring of a delicate enginery, aspired to enlighten its user and refine, lifting to a vision of the indwelling power, the absorbed mechanics' crude initiative. He raised his eyes, heaven light mirrored a face. Amazed at the works 
wrought in her mystic sleep. She looked upon the world that she had made. Wondering now seized the great automaton. She paused to understand her self and aim. Pondering, she learned to act by conscious rule. A visioned measure guided her rhythmic steps. Thought bordered her instincts with a frame of will and lit with the idea her blinded earth.